Hi everybody, this is Monica, and today I'm going to share some tips with you on how to create magical mouse ear ornaments. Aren't these fun? This mouse ear ornament is based on my half and half pattern, which is available on the Ornament Girl website. In fact, if you purchase the half and half pattern, there is a supplemental guide that shows you and walks you through step by step how to create this ornament right here, including the ears and how to do the band and some other tips, okay? So that is free as a bonus with the half and half pattern. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the half and half pattern, I'm talking about this pattern here. This ornament is split visually right down the middle. Now the pattern is based on the basic star pattern, which is also available on the Ornament Girl website as a free tutorial. This is a basic star ornament. So as I continue to make more and more half and half ornaments, I realized one day that if I turned it to the side, I could do some really fun things with that. And that is when I came up with the mouse ear ornament. First of all, the magical mouse ear ornament like I'm holding here, this is just created on a three inch foam ball. You can use the soft polystyrene type of balls or rough foam works too. A three inch is the size you would need and those are available on the Ornament Girl website on the supply shop. I've also created mouse ear ornaments on other shapes like this. This is a disc shape. Now if you have in the past gotten these disc shaped pieces like this and they're that very dense foam that's hard on your fingers then you will be very happy to know that the ornament girl currently has in her shop that same shape and size uh, in the soft polystyrene type of foam and these are amazing because they don't hurt your fingers but you still get that nice disc shape so this is the type of disc that I used in order to create this ornament here okay now another shape that you can use and is really fun if you want an ornament that just sits on a dresser or a, on a table or something, is a hemi. Now if you don't know what a hemi is, a hemi is what we like to call these half round ball shaped pieces of foam. Hemi is short for hemisphere. And so you can use one of these to create something like this. A mouse ear ornament that you can set on a shelf or on a table. These are so fun. I created this one in honor of the 90th birthday of our favorite mouse. Isn't that cute? I gave him a little birthday hat and I'll show you later how I did that. So we've talked about shapes, now let's talk about the different styles. In addition to the half and half pattern that I've used like this, where it visually splits the ornament in two different colors, you can also use the parasol pattern. The parasol pattern is what I created my girl mouse ornaments with. And I really liked the difference here between the sort of tailored look of the half and half pattern versus the sort of, you know, girly pleated look of the pattern that I used for the girl mouse, which is the parasol pattern. I really like the difference there, uh, the contrast of a very tailored look versus the cute girly pleated look that I used here. So both of those patterns work great. If you want to create something like this, like I did on this hemi right here, where it just sits down, I just wanted it to all be one solid color. Um, I did use sort of like a patterned type of fabric, a very sparkly type of fabric, because I wanted it to be sort of shimmery. I used the basic star pattern for this ornament here because I wanted the entire ornament to be one color so that the ears would really pop. I wanted that contrast between the two colors on this ornament. So the basic star pattern works fine if you're doing something like this. One helpful tip, if you're going to create a hemi, then you will only do half of the pattern. So, you know, usually when you do an ornament pattern, you do one side and then you go to the opposite side and you do it again, right? You double it. But for a hemi, of course, you're only going to have to do that pattern once because on the flat side, you will have already done a certain treatment here. And I'll show you how I like to do mine. So you'll begin on the bottom and then you'll do your pattern on the top and you're only going to have to do it one time. You're not gonna to have to do two sides in the same pattern, okay? So I will again show you how to do the bottom, but just know if you've never made one of these before, you're just doing the pattern one time. Now for some tips about actually constructing your mouse ear ornament. Okay, typically when you make a half and half ornament, you make a band that is split in half as well. See, I made this one for my son's graduation in school colors, and half of the band was white and half of the band is this maroon color. Um, so usually for the half and half, that's what you do. That band uh, is two colors all the way around, okay? And then it changes here on bottom. So for the mouse ear ornament though, you don't want that band split in half. You want your band to be you know, red on the bottom and black on the top. So let's talk about that. So you want to start the band just about a quarter of an inch where that dividing line is, okay? Just pin it once right there and then bring it around and you're going to pin it here on the other side, again, just about oh, a quarter inch or so from this dividing line. And then you can snip off 
any excess. Okay, so we're just going to snip off the extra. And then you will have your black band prepared. Now I like to pin mine because I like a fluffy band instead of a very flat iron band. But now you will take your band and you want to make sure that you know which side has that raw edge. You want the raw edge to be hidden. So this band is going to lay on the top of my mouse ear ornament to cover all those pins, right? So if this is how it's going to lay, you're going to lay it this way first, and then you're actually going to flip it upside down, and you're going to line up those two edges, the raw edges here, and then you're going to pin it. So pin it twice, right just slightly above where that dividing line is, okay? Just a little bit above. You want to pin it on both sides. You want those bands to be the same width. Here we go. So it's pinned twice. And now, hopefully, I, actually, I don't think I got this one close enough to the dividing line. There we go. And now it's pinned. And now when you flip it over, now that band is also part of that dividing line. So you're going to bring it on around to the opposite side. And I'm going to go ahead and remove these pins. I don't need them anymore. Now when you get here to this side, you're going to bring your band down and see how it's too long. So right where that dividing line is, you're going to flip it under. Just fold it under. Mine's not quite folded under. In fact, I think mine's just a little bit long. You need to trim it. You don't want too much excess folded underneath. And then flip under that little bit right there so that it lines up with the dividing line. Now once you have your band in place, you want to hold it there and now you don't want your pins to show. So we're going to hide those pins by tucking them underneath the band. Right where that little folded loop is right there, on the end of your band, you're going to slip your pin into that little area right there, right up against the edge of the band, and then push it down into the foam. There we go. Now as you push it in there, it's probably going to catch on this top layer of your band. And a lot of times what I like to do is I'll just take another pin take the pin head usually and I'll tuck it in there and kind of bring that fabric up and over so that it will not catch on that pin head and then I'll use my nail or just press down on it to get it all the way down into the foam. So we've got one side and now we need to do the same thing on this other side. I'm going to take a pin and slip it between those two little layers of the band so it's actually holding the bottom layer of my black band. So now I'm going to push it down in there, and of course that pin head caught again, so I'm going to take another pin, just like I did before. And I'm just going to work that fabric up and over. There we go. And now I have that nice dividing line that continues. So that's how you do the band a little differently than you would for a typical half and half ornament. One really important change that you need to be aware of when you go to create your half and half version of the mouse ear ornament, make sure when you begin the second half of your ornament that you are very, very careful about your fabric placement. Now I do go over this in the supplemental ebook that comes along with the half and half pattern, so it's detailed in there. But just, just as a quick little reminder, make sure that when you go to create this second side of your ornament that you are placing all of the red fabric on one hemisphere and all of the black fabric on the other hemisphere, okay, versus a typical half and half ornament where you have each hemisphere has two colors. No matter what side you look at, you can always see both colors, okay? That's not the case here with the mouse version of the half and half pattern. You can only see one side. So make sure that your mouse is red on bottom and black on top. Now let's talk about using the parasol pattern for your mouse ear ornaments. The parasol pattern, typically you have two colors, but they are alternating. Every section is an alternate color. And when you go to do that pattern for a mouse ear ornament, you just want to keep all of one fabric on one side and all on the other. And again, you want to make sure that those colors are on the same hemisphere. So just be aware of that. You're going to be using the same number of pieces that you normally would for a parasol pattern. You're just not going to be um, having those sections alternate. And one important tip if you are going to use a hemi for your ornament. When you go to construct it, you will do the bottom and then you'll do your pattern on top. And as you work your pattern on the top, you want to make sure and stop your pieces here, pin them a little bit above the edge because this is the edge of the ornament and you don't want to bring those pieces all the way down here. You want to stop about a 
oh, an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch, probably right above the edge. Because if you bring them all the way down and pin them right along the edge, then when you are finished and you go to place your band all the way around, then you may have those little fraying edges peeking out and you don't want that. So to help give it a very finished look, you just wanna stop all of your pieces and have your pin line running about a quarter of an inch or so above the edge of the hemi, okay? That will be very helpful later on. If you're going to use a band around the base of your hemi, don't cut it the same length as you normally would for a regular round ornament because those hemis tend to be just a little bigger. So make sure you measure the circumference of your ornament and cut your band accordingly. To create the ears on your mouse ornaments, I have a couple of options that I'll share. Now my original tutorial does show step-by-step -step how to do the ribbon wrapped ears like this. And these are based on the Ornament Girl's free tutorial that she shares on how to do a ribbon wrapped ornament, like a three inch ornament. So to do the ears, I just, you know, sized my materials down. I used smaller foam pieces. These are one and a half inch foam balls and then I used more narrow ribbon. I used ribbon that is just a quarter of an inch wide. And that seems to be about as big as you would wanna go for a foam piece, for a foam ball that's just one and a half inches because if you get much more wide than that, you're gonna have a lot of overhang. It's not going to hug that small foam ball very well and you may end up with a very messy looking ear. So try to keep it you know, no more than a quarter of an inch. And you may have to do a lot of you know, passes, but um, it, it seems to do the job. And this is satin ribbon. I like the black satin ribbon because it's, it has that sheen to it. Uh, so that works really well. And when you're done following that tutorial, um, you'll end up with something like this that has a pin in it, okay? And then you will just insert that down into your ornament. And we'll talk more about the pin in a minute. But before that, I wanna share another option on ears that I just recently found and I really love. And you may have noticed when I showed you some of my examples, um, these are flat ears, these are beads. And I just recently found a supplier who carries these type of beads this large. And these are 41 millimeters across and see they're like a flat disc. So these are great, especially if you find the ribbon wrapped type of ear just too fussy or too difficult for you, okay? So um, if you prefer beads, they are, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You just put the pin in and you put it into your ornament and you're done. And what I love about this, this is an acrylic bead that has like sort of a rubberized, you know, black coating on it, but it's perfect for being able to attach things. You may have noticed I put some rhinestones on these ears and I did a date. This would make a really great keepsake if you could do someone's name in rhinestones um, or something I haven't tried yet but I'm going to is to use my personal cutting machine. Like if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette type of a machine that will cut vinyl, you could do people's names and dates or some sort of little message on the front and back of these little beaded ears. So isn't that cute? That's a really great way to be able to personalize it. I got pretty fancy with this girl mouse ornament here. I did a lot of fancy rhinestones. I had some rhinestones that had already come in this shape, so I just cut them down and then attached them. Now I will tell you that sometimes these self-adhesive rhinestones, they don't really like to stay on anything sometimes other than paper. So I did add a little bit of clear craft glue underneath these um, before I actually pressed them all the way down. I added some glue and that really is holding them really well. Also, I will say that when you get these beaded ears on your ornament, sometimes they sort of like to spin around. In fact, these ones are trying to spin. And so you may wanna just you know pull it out just a little bit and add just a little dab of glue and then press it all the way down so that they're not spinning around all the time. To attach the ears to your ornament, you are going to need some very long pins. Now, my original tutorial shows how to use pins like this. These are long three inch floral pins, and I just found these at Walmart. You can also find them online. And I use those because that's just what I could find locally. And so one of the things you need to do with these though, is you need to take some wire cutters and just snip off that little beaded tip there. And then what you will do is when you have your ribbon wrapped ornament you know, ready, it's already prepared, then you would take that cut end of your pin and work it gently up between the layers of your ribbon and push it about halfway up into the ball. And then once it's up in there, like I've done this one, then you would take your ornament and you'll figure out where to place it. And I kind of try to use these folding lines here on my ornament. So then I will take my fingers and just try to work my pin down a little bit into the ornament. And sometimes it's hard because you've got a lot of layers going on there. So sometimes I'll take my needle nose pliers and those seem to be very helpful. And I'll start you know, pushing it down into the foam. There we go, I got through several layers. Okay, make sure your angle is right. 
you want it angled, you know, in line with the fold line. Now, one thing to be aware of though is you are going to have these very long pins. Just be very aware you're not angling your pin down and then coming out here or to the side or up. You want them right in the core of your foam ball. All right, so once you sort of get it started, then you can use your needle nose pliers and just continue to press it down in there. And leave just a little bit of space, and I always like to put just a little dab of hot glue or craft glue right there just to keep the ears steady. I don't like them spinning around. And sometimes you'll notice on your ribbon wrapped ears that sometimes one side of the ear looks a little better than the other. So sometimes if one side doesn't look that great, I'll kind of turn that to the back side and put my glue there. And then once you go down as far as you can and you've got a little dab of glue there, then I could just go ahead and press it all the way down. Now, if these long floral pins are all you can find, if this is all you have access to, then you know, that works. That's what my tutorial uh, was about just showing you how to use these uh, because if this is all you have then that's all you have and that's what you need to use. But recently we came across a supplier who does have these long pins without that beaded head on there. And so these are just a regular headed pin, no bead, and boy that really is a game changer because this allows you to use something like this, these beads, or the ribbon wrapped ear. In fact, it makes it so much easier because you don't have to work it up in between layers of ribbon. All you do is you go ahead and wrap your ribbon as you normally would, but before you do that very last pass of your ribbon over that last section, then you'll take your long pin and you will insert it gently into the top, the very top of the ear, okay? So you really have to work it back and forth in order to get it into the very top because there's so many layers of ribbon there. So I finally got mine through all those layers of ribbon. Now be very careful about your angle. You want the angle to be, you know, pretty straight. You want it to go right through the center and out the exact opposite side, okay? So I'm pushing it in and I want it to come out. Now don't just shove it right through because you may push all of your ribbon off. So once again, when you feel it getting to the other side and it's giving you a little more pressure, then you want to just gently begin to kind of work it through those layers and I can see it pushing through. So sometimes I'll actually put it on some sort of surface that's solid and begin to kind of push it through so it will pierce through all those layers of the ribbon. Okay, you can also use your needle nose pliers and uh, if you want need to press it down on a surface and you can't seem to get enough you know, pressure on it, sometimes if you push too hard, you'll bend the pin. So by using your needle nose pliers, you can really exert a lot more pressure closer to the ear and just press down until it gets through all those layers of ribbon and mine has finally pierced all the way through. So now I can push it all the way through and just that one little pin head is showing. And so now I have this final layer of my ribbon that I'm going to use to cover that. So this is the final section and it's going to cover that pin head. And as I reach the bottom of the ear, I'm going to, Usually I glue it, I glue it and I, and I pin it both just for double insurance so that it doesn't come apart. There we go. So now though, when you insert this, you know that that pin head is right here, right at the top of your ribbon wrapped ear, and it's very easy now to insert it. So you can insert it and you don't even have to use those needle nose pliers this time because you can just press the top of it. You know, when you use the floral pin that has the, had that bead cut off of the top, the reason you can't just press down on it without the pliers is because if you press down, it's going to pierce through the top, right? But by having that pin head right here at the top of the ear, now you can go ahead and just press it all you want and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not gonna pop out. Make sure you add a little bit of glue still and now just press it all the way down. And there we go. So those long pins are really great. And we will share the link to where you can get these pins on the page for this video. And now let's talk about embellishments and some other things you can do to your ornaments. First of all, anytime I make a hemi-shaped ornament like this, anything that's going to set you know, on a shelf or a dresser, um, I do this particular tip uh, on the bottom of it. And I do the same thing anytime I make my crown ornaments like this or if I do my unicorn ornaments, I always do this tip because it just really adds a little something special when the bottom side of your ornament that sets down has a little bit of cushion there, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you want to take your hemi and you want to cut uh, your fabric just a little larger than the width, just a little larger than the diameter of your hemi, okay? You need just a little bit so that it can wrap up and around the side 
And then you want to cut a piece of batting. Now I just took some batting that I had from a blanket project one day and I cut it the same size and shape as my Hemi. And you don't have to be fancy, just kind of trim around just to get it the basic round shape, okay? And then I pin it a couple times, kind of in the middle, just to hold it in place. You don't want it sliding around. So pin it a couple times. And now take your fabric and you want to put the wrong side of the fabric on top of that batting. And then you just want to wrap one side up around the edge, okay? Wrap it up around the side of the edge and you're going to pin it right there. You don't want it right on the edge. You want it up about a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch at least, okay? Right there. Now hold on and turn your ornament around to the opposite side. And now we're going up to the opposite side and we're going to pin this edge as well. You might have to kind of pull it just a little bit. Now you don't want to pull it so hard that you like distort the fabric, okay? You just want to pull it so it's tight but not overly, you know, stretched out. This is especially important if you do something here on the bottom like putting some vinyl on there, some heat transfer vinyl with a little message or if you do a photograph, print out a photograph on some fabric and place it here on the bottom. You know, those are fun little things you can do on the bottom of your ornament as sort of a little surprise, okay? Or if you have some sort of a motif that has, uh, you know, something that needs to be centered right in the middle, then you'll need to be very careful with not stretching your fabric too much where things get distorted and off center, okay? So you've got two pins in holding your fabric in place, and now we're going to do this two opposite sides. Okay, we've got four pins in place, and I think you'll find that as you continue adding pins all the way around your ornament, that working in pairs is really very helpful, okay? So you're going to put these corners down and pin those, and just work in pairs, and that really helps keep things even as you pin around the edges. And when you're done, you just really want a nice row of pins all around the edge of your hemi. Okay, I have finished putting all those pins around the edge of my hemi. And then I just took my scissors and just roughly cut some of that extra fabric that was sticking up above the pin line just to remove that and get it out of the way. And now that the bottom is done, it's nice and soft and I can do my pattern on the top. This is going to be another girl mouse ornament, so I'm excited about that. I'm gonna do a pink one, which I have not done before, so that will be fun. I did want to mention the size of the Hemi that I'm using for this is a little larger. Um, currently, the ornament girl has for sale in her shop um, some larger Hemis. So the normal size she gets is usually about three and a half, but she happens to have right now uh, some larger ones that are almost four. So if you have some sort of a motif or something that is a little bigger and you need that extra space, um, you might check out those larger Hemis and see if that will work for your project, okay? One thing that makes the boy mouse ornaments very recognizable are the cute little buttons on front. So whatever I happen to have on hand, I usually only use yellow or white buttons um, and I either glue them or I will use pins like this, these pearl headed white pins and I will place one in each of the holes to hold it in place. Now if I glue it, I usually use Beacon 3-in-1 glue because it dries clear and it holds really well. So whether you want to glue it or pin it, either way works. On this one, I wanted to add a little bit of bling, but I didn't have any sort of you know sparkly buttons down here, but I wanted to balance out all the bling that was up here. So in order to do that, I just used regular white buttons and I glued them on. And then I had some larger rhinestones and I used those and placed them with some glue right on top of the holes. And that added just enough bling where everything looked a little more balanced on this one. Something that makes the girl mouse ornaments more recognizable is the bow. So I will find ribbon that has polka dots on it usually, and then I will tie it into a bow. Sometimes it takes a little bit of you know finagling to get that bow all facing the same direction, but it can be done. And then after I have my bow, then I will take a pearl tipped pin, red usually, and then I take my hanger, whether it's cording or ribbon or whatever, and I pierce through the end of that with my pin, and then I place the pin through the center of the knot of the bow, and I just place it right through, and then I insert it into the top of my ornament. You can also add a little dab of glue right before you press it all the way down into the ornament, and that will help keep it from slipping out if your ornament is hanging up and your ornament happens to be a little bit heavy. I also like to add some sort of trim around the middle of my girl ornaments. Here I happen to use rickrack, and that's really cute. Sometimes I'll use satiny type 
trim. Sometimes I'll use sequined trim just depending on what kind of project I'm working on. Um, but all of those work. And I do tend to put the rickrack or the trim on after my bands. You can put it under the band, especially if it's something that's rather flat like this rickrack. But if you have some sort of trim like this that has sequins on it and it's very chunky, then you definitely wanna put that over your band because otherwise if you put it on first and then you try to put your band on, it's gonna be hard to pin through all of that. So definitely put any kind of chunky trim on the outside of your band, okay? Bands go on first, trim goes on later. And now for a tip that is not mouse ornament related. This is a minion ornament. And I get asked very often about my minion ornaments and I just wanted to share that the exact same steps you use to create the mouse ear ornament is how you create the minion ornament. You use the same steps, you just change the fabric, and of course you change the embellishments. So instead of adding ears, you add an eyeball here. Now I used ribbon as the band, and I just pinned it on and brought it all the way around. And then I took a large, very large button, and I, I wanted it to be silver, so I painted it because I only had a white one. <laughs> so I painted it silver because I wanted some sparkle. And then to attach the button, I placed some sequins onto straight pins and placed one into every hole of the button to hold it on there. I usually also add a little craft glue underneath just to make certain that it doesn't go anywhere, but those large sequins make sure that your pins don't slip right through the hole of the button. So once this little frame here is in place, then I can add my wiggly eye on top. Now be careful about attaching this. You don't wanna use hot glue that is very, very hot and will melt the back of the wiggly eye. So usually I use a low temperature glue gun and I will just fill the center of that with low temperature glue and then hold the wiggly eye in place until it sets. And the final tip that I want to share is how I made this cute little birthday hat here for my ornament. So to make a birthday hat, you will need a cone-shaped piece of foam. And this happened to be the only kind that I had on hand. This is a cone from the Ornament Girl shop. And I know sometimes in the stores you can find the squatty little short cones that are, you know, they look like little trees and they're rough foam, but I didn't have any of those on hand. So those might work too if you find those in your local store. But since this was the only cone I happened to have on hand, I had to just work with what I had. And I was willing to sacrifice a cone like this in order to do the birthday hat. So what I did is I measured from the tip down about two inches and then I cut through the foam right in that spot, okay? Now, I was careful, I used a serrated knife to do that. If you're not comfortable using cutting materials, then certainly do not use that. Um, but I was comfortable using a serrated knife and I just carefully and slowly did my cutting. Now be careful, if you are going to cut your cone, make sure you don't place it just flat against your work surface and cut straight through because if you do that, you're going to be cutting at an angle. And when you're done and you have your little cone for the birthday hat, it's gonna have, you know, an angle on the bottom like this instead of being a flat little birthday hat that, that has a flat edge, okay? So as you cut it, you'll need to hold it in such a way where the tip is up above your work surface. In fact, you want the tip here and the center of your cone here to be exactly horizontal, okay? So you're gonna have to hold this larger edge and make sure that the tip is up above the work surface. And once this flat edge is straight up and down, straight up and down vertically, then you can go ahead and do your cutting. Now you'll, again, you're gonna have to cut very carefully and you just want to drag your serrated knife through and lift it out and go back and then do another cut through. If you try to saw back and forth, I think you'll find that it's just gonna make a mess of your foam. So just going very slowly and just doing one direction, eventually you'll work your way through the foam, okay? And when you're done, you'll be left with this short little piece that is just exactly like this, only smaller. So once I had my little shape here that I needed, then it was time to cover it in cording. Now you can use whatever kind of cording you like. In the past I've used this type of cording um, and that really worked well for like my unicorn horns. I like that for unicorn horns. But this time I wanted something that was a little bigger, a little thicker. So I happened to have this cording on hand. In fact, I've used up most of it now. This is all I have left. But in order to start it, I started it near the top and I placed it there and I used pins that were three quarter of an inch. I wanted to use some smaller pins and I wanted gold so that they would match my cording and they would just kind of be camouflaged in with the cording. So I took one of those and I pinned it actually a couple times here on the side and make sure when you pin it that you're placing your pins at an angle so that you're not going to just pierce right through you know, the other side of your cone. So all pins need to go in at a downward angle, okay? You don't wanna poke yourself. And then once I had them in place and holding the cording on the side, I brought it up to the top 
And then I took another one of those long pins, the kind that we attach the mouse ears with, and I placed it in the very top. I pierced right through the cording and then down into the cone at a straight angle. Now you don't want to hurt yourself. So you have to be careful as you insert this. You want to go very slowly and you want to try to do it at an angle that is straight through your cone. There we go. Now mine is all the way through. Press it all the way down and that's going to help hold your cording in place. Now this cording tends to fray a little bit so I actually would add a little bit of glue here just to keep it from fraying anymore. And then once I had it in place then I just begin to wrap it around itself here at the tip and every time I wrapped it around itself I would add a pin just to hold it right there and just continue wrapping and wrapping and pinning and pinning to hold it in place and eventually as you continue to work down the cone going round and round and round then you'll end up with this okay and it will go all the way from the top to the bottom and so just continue pinning it all the way around and you want to make sure that as you wrap it around that all of those layers are just pushed right up against each other and once you get to the bottom of the cone you can just pin it a few extra times and maybe add a little glue so that it doesn't fray on the end after all the gold cord was in place then I placed some little loops of mini rickrack here on the bottom I just made little loops and put them in with pins all the way around so you can see here at the bottom these little loops that I created I just pinned them straight down into the cone using little sequin pins I didn't want super long pins because I was afraid they might come out you know the top of the hat so I used little sequin pins and just pinned all around the edge so there's little bits of rickrack coming all the way out and then I wanted a little extra rickrack going up the cone too so I pinned it in place here at the bottom and then I wrapped it all the way around to the top and pinned it again and then I placed a little pom-pom on top just for some fun. And I just placed a regular pin at the top to hold the pom-pom in place. And once I was done, then I was able to just place the entire hat right into my ornament. Now if I was giving this away, I would definitely suggest placing some craft glue to help hold it in place because people may tend to you know, grab it by the hat and hold the entire ornament by the hat and you don't want it slipping out. So uh, remember you have that long pin that is from the top all the way to the bottom. So you can press on the top there and help get that hat right down into the ornament if you need to, okay? And there you go, birthday hat. I hope you found this information valuable and helpful and inspiring. And if you do create a magical mouse ears ornament or any of the shapes or variations that I've shown or a minion ornament, I would really love to see it. Please feel free to post it on the club Facebook page if you are an Ornament Girl Club member. Or if you're on Instagram, please feel free to tag the Ornament Girl so that we can take a look. Happy ornamenting!